Hearing there's a glitch in Pokemon can be music to Pokemon fans' ears. There's a lot of Pokemon connoisseurs that like to see what game-breaking capabilities a glitch can do to look out of bounds of what's normal in your regular journey and how you interact in the games. I remember as a kid playing Pokemon Silver and finding out with my cousin that you could clone Pokemon in the PC and duplicating all my favorites. Really, that was just kind of inconsiderate and basically cell splicing without a license, so my Game Boy was taken away from me, but those memories without my medical license at the age of 9 led me to look for those fond, memorable Pokemon glitches throughout all the Pokemon games that may have been nostalgic for you when you finally pulled off a trick you found somewhere in a YouTube video with a webcam pointing at the screen. These are the top 10 glitches throughout all of the Pokemon games that you might have done or remember that created some mind-blowing and different adventures in Pokemon. We'll not only be talking about them, but also showing you how to do them so you can, in fact, try these at home without supervision or outside because all these systems are portable. Let's go! Before we jump into our video, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Have you ever felt a bit of danger surfing the web? Maybe it feels like there's a glitch in your system. Well, Surfshark has you covered in all aspects of safety. Surfshark VPN secures your data with industry-leading measures using uncrackable encryption. You can even unlock 15 of the largest Netflix country libraries and even more content on most platforms. Just like the content we're unlocking in today's video. It's fast and easy to use, has 24-7 live customer support, even blocks more than 1 million known malicious websites and phishing methods, and has a strict no-logs policy, meaning they won't keep your data. Don't know what you're looking for, but we won't either. Surfshark has kindly given me the special code JETHROTEX for you that will provide you all with an 84% discount unlocking the best price on the market plus 4 extra months free. They even come with a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try it risk free. Get yourself Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash JETHROTEX and enter my promo code to unlock all these features so you can surf the web safely. Number 10. The Celebi Egg Glitch Mythical Pokemon, especially in early generations, were some of the hardest Pokemon to get. Sometimes you'd miss the boat and tools like key items to open locked doors were only given away for a temporary amount of time, and if you missed that window then you were unable to go out and catch one of these Pokemon that would soon after be thrown into the Game Freak Vault until they were released again on Blu-ray. In the Generation 2 games, the only way of getting a Celebi was to either obtain one through an event distribution for Gold and Silver during the early 2000s, or by getting the GS Ball and Pokemon Crystal, which on the original Game Boy Color was an event item that was only in Japan. Due to this, we had to resort to cheating to get Celebi, which was rightfully ours anyways, and is possible through a series of glitches and complicated steps. To do this, you'll need an egg that contains a Pokemon that will know beat up as its third move upon hatching. This is obtainable by getting two Sneasel to level 57 and having that move in their third slot. You'll also need a bad clone, which must be level 0 and have its name made up of a bunch of question marks. It'll say level 1, but it's actually level 0. This can be done using the cloning method specific for the Gen 2 games, which we'll go over in a later section. And finally, you'll need 5 Pokemon, preferably weak and common Pokemon, that may be released. After getting these pieces of the puzzle, you must follow these 10 steps. Okay, I'll keep them on for a bit longer. And a Celebi will hatch at level 0. It will be unusable here, but you can have the daycare couple raise it to at least level 2, which lets you use it. It's a fairly nice step-by-step -step procedure that fills you with the nostalgia of looking back at the times you tried to follow a GameFAQs post. Number 9. Acid Rain The Acid Rain glitch in Pokemon is a glitch where multiple weather effects occur simultaneously in a Pokemon battle. This glitch is specific to Pokemon Platinum, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver, and even though it was discovered before the English release of the games, it was never fixed before their launch. To activate this glitch, there needs to be a weather effect in play, which also includes Trick Room, Uproar, and Gravity, as well as the other regular weather effects, aside from Rain. If these are in play, and you then use Pursuit on a Pokemon that is switching out, causing it to then faint, it will activate this glitch. What this does is when the next Pokemon enters the fight, the weather will change and cause all four types of weather to occur at the same time, damaging all Pokemon in the process. It will continue until the end of the battle, but what's funny is if a Pokemon like Casform or Cherim is in play on either team, it will constantly change forms, never stopping, making it unable to finish the battle until the game is turned off. Number 8. The Glitch Dimension the Glitch Dimension is a term given by Pokemon fans that refers to a glitch in the Pokemon Gold and Silver versions that will alter the colors of the game and showing some sprites through a pink filter. It also lets you see the hoe in the title screen of Pokemon Gold in its full colors instead of just a silhouette. 
I'm not sure how many of you guys relate to this, but seeing that stylistic glitch look of vaporwave colors reeled throughout an old 16-bit pixel game was a really fun thing to see that felt like its own style from the early days of video games. There are many ways to access this dimension of glitches, but the most popular one was the coin case method. It's one of the simpler ones, as all you need to do is talk to the Machop in Vermilion City or the Machoke in the Goldenrod department store, and then using the coin case immediately afterwards to activate it. This glitch is a safe one and poses no harm to the save file of the games, and just adds a level of variety to the visual aspect of your game. It's one of the easiest glitches to perform on this list, so go ahead and try it out and tell your friends how you like to pick apart games and put them back together, and is why you got into coding. Number 7. Leveling Pass 100 Pokemon are capped to be maxed out at level 100. You aren't supposed to be able to go past level 100, but in Generation 1 and Generation 2, there's a way that you are able to get your Pokemon up to level 255. Wow, I can't wait to get an Eevee to the full cap of 255. All you need to do is get a Pokemon that is over level 100 by using your other glitches like the classic Old Man Cinnabar Island trick and giving it rare candies to get it to level 255. Although most of you game breakers watching will already know, for those who don't, the way you perform the old man glitch is that you must talk to the old man located in the north section of Viridian City, let him show you how to catch a Pokemon, then immediately fly to Cinnabar Island. Here you can surf up and down along the east coast of the island, where the water is against this licorice stick of land, without leaving Cinnabar Island. While Pokemon will appear based on the player's name, and some will be above level 100. An added part to this glitch is that if you feed a Pokemon at level 255 one more rare candy, it will let you get a Pokemon that's level 0, as it will overflow its data and reset all of its stats to 5. Number 6. Glitch City What's better than being trapped in a dimension? Being trapped in a city. Glitch City is a term used by players to refer to maps with invalid tile data. To access these, you must perform a series of steps in the Safari Zone. First you must enter the Safari Zone, and then immediately leave. When asked if you want to exit the Safari Zone, answer no, and save your game before starting it. You will now be able to walk outside of the Safari Zone with the steps counter, but you must make sure you answer no when leaving the desk. You have to walk around until the steps wear off, and will then be teleported back to the Safari Zone. Leave that zone and you'll access Glitch City. Depending on where you were before being sent back to the Safari Zone entrance, the city will look different and let you do different things. You aren't able to access this if you were in Celadon City, Cerulean City, Lavender Town, Saffron City, Fuchsia City, Viridian City, Pewter City, Cinnabar Island, Vermilion City, there's a lot of them, or inside any building. But everywhere else, like these three tiles are fine. You can escape Glitch City by using Fly or Teleport, but feel free to admire the scenery and tile blocks. Number 5. Tweaking Going out of bounds in any video game is a consistent glitch among a lot of games. It lets you access areas you are not supposed to, skip entire sections, and load messed up versions of the game. The Gen 4 games are infamously known for their out of bounds glitch known as tweaking, which lets you access a bunch of event exclusive Pokemon in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. It also allows you to load glitched versions of Sinnoh, Kanto, and Johto. While using the bike in its fourth gear, you can make the game not load sections fast enough, and it lets you access shortcuts and travel across a dark void to get towards Shaman, Darkrai, Cresselia, and Arceus. There are multiple guides you can see here, and you can look even more up that will guide you into the abyss and will even provide you with a map that will make your glitch travels feel more productive. Although this glitch is not present in the games that follow Generation 4, the Pokemon obtained from this exploit are everywhere, and you won't be able to know exactly how they were encountered. Number 4. Cloning Had to save this a little later on in the video as this was a personal favorite of mine just from nostalgia and the old days of Pokemon. Starting this off with the original Generation 1 and Generation 2 games, the iconic way of cloning in Pokemon was done by interrupting the trade right at the moment by turning off the Game Boy or unplugging the link cable. It is, however, very hazardous to the save file and could possibly corrupt the data, but who knows consequences when you're 8. Generation 2 had the box change method that lets you clone up to 5 Pokemon while transferring them from your party to the storage system and turning off the game system at the right time while it's trying to save. It's how I learned how to time my jokes. While these were likely some of the most nostalgic and known cloning methods, there were actually more methods of cloning after this as the years of Pokemon did not stop counterfeiting. In Pokemon Emerald, you can clone Pokemon by accessing the Battle Tower and interrupting the save at the right moment, allowing you to create copies of 6 Pokemon at the same time, along with the items. In Generation 4, you can trade a Pokemon, and if one of the DS systems is turned off at a certain time, the Pokemon that was traded to the game that was not turned off will appear in both players' parties. 
Again, it does commonly corrupt save files and is apparently effective in the Generation 5 games, but unconfirmed in those. Finally, in Generation 6, you can clone a Pokemon while trading among two nearby Nintendo 3DSs that are connected and then breaking off the connection. Depending on the timing the first Pokemon may clone, the trade may complete, but also the Pokemon might be erased. The chance of harming your save data is supposedly non-existent, and the chance of erasing your Pokemon is small, but so is encountering a shiny Pokemon, people still find those. Cloning is one of the more nostalgic glitches, and possibly one of the most used, giving us a little something to look back on. Number 3. The Mew Glitch Of all the Pokemon that were withheld from you by Game Freak so they could be laundered in events, Mew was the first one we realized we couldn't obtain, as it would only be given in special ways. That led us to having to break the game and find ways to obtain this elusive Pokemon, as many people had no idea how to catch this Pokemon when the games first came out. The Mew Glitch, also known as the Long Range Trainer Glitch, is a glitch found in all of the original Generation 1 games. There are multiple ways to do this, but the Quick Mew Glitch is by walking in the range of the Junior Trainer on Route 24, west of the Nugget Bridge, to try to start a battle, but instead hitting Start and using Teleport from an Abra. You can catch one on Route 24 before this point to do this trick. Your A and B buttons won't work after doing this, because the game will believe you're about to be in a battle. You then have to go into the Cerulean Gym and battle the Swimmer, which will also restore the function to your buttons. After this, return to Route 24 and you'll encounter a Mew. There are a few variations to this, as well as a needed change method for Pokemon Yellow, and some certain things to look out for here, so there will be a link in the description for you to look at to make sure you can do it properly. But overall, if done correctly, you'll be able to encounter this Pokemon that was hidden away from the original, original games. Number 2. Missing No Missing No might as well be an official Pokemon, and is one of the most iconic glitches. The look of it has been depicted in many fan art posts and updated to fit the new generations. In the first generation of Pokemon games, Missing No could be encountered after performing the Mew glitch or the Old Man glitch, allowing it to appear in the wild. But most commonly in the shore of the east coast of Cinnabar Island, which is the main place you guys would have seen it from, and consider it its home. In Pokemon Red and Blue, Missing No had the dual typing of Bird and Normal, which is the only time the bird typing has appeared in the games. In Pokemon Yellow, it has the normal typing, as well as a randomly named type, which often contains the number 9 in its name. This glitch Pokemon has 5 forms, or sprites, which are set to different methods, including the red and blue normal one, the ghost from Lavender Town, Kabutops and Aerodactyl's fossils, and a form exclusive to Pokemon Yellow that replaces the original game's normal one. Missing note can cause different sets of glitches when traded or viewed in other games, if it's traded to the Generation 2 games, it will be holding a Carbo. If it's viewed in Pokemon Stadium, it will appear as a substitute doll with its stats appearing as question marks. If viewed in Pokemon Stadium 2, it will permanently become a Ditto. And as you all know, it can even create the item duplication glitch, which increases the number of items in the 6th bag slot by 128 upon its appearance. Missing No is one of the most famous glitches of any game and will likely never be forgotten with the amount of mentions and mods created for it. And maybe at some point, Game Freak will put something just as close to it in the games, or a real Pokemon that looks just like a messed up glitch. Oh, my apologies, I remember Blacephalon. Number 1. While I do know Missy No might have been a clear number one in terms of fame, I think something as a nice ending to a game that leaves a rewarding conclusion will make such a memorable experience. In most Pokemon games, there are special battles that allow you to fight against a strong trainer you might have met along the way and wasn't sure what their capabilities were. Someone like the hidden champion at the end of the Elite Four, Red hiding atop a mountain in the after game, or Steven in Pokemon Emerald when you wondered where he went when he was replaced by Wallace. There's one of these trainers hidden in Generation 1 that isn't accessible in any way except by performing a glitch. You must first perform the classic old man glitch in Viridian City, with the character MN like this, as shown in the video, in the third, fifth, or seventh slot of the player's name. Doing this will trigger a fight against Professor Oak, who has a team of Tauros, Exeggutor, Arcanine, Gyarados, and the starter Pokémon that was left behind from the start of your journey. His team will contain Pokémon that are the highest level in the game, all the way up to level 70, and makes him the strongest trainer in the game. It would have been great to see this battle officially added into the games, but the thought of having to battle the Professor, who was there from the start, as a secret encounter would have really added a great ending to your adventure. Personally, this also confirms you should start with Charmander, as you can end with Charizard, Blue can end with Blastoise, and Professor Oak can start with a nice little grass Bulbasaur to tend to like an old man in his bonsai tree, growing it up, starting his own garden, and at the end, having a Venusaur. Executor doesn't count, sorry, as eggs. <laughs>